Hello. Let's talk about how we are trying to uh, make Linux better for games on Windows. So there have been a lot of effort going on in different areas of the kernel. So I've been working on one. So I'm going to tell you in, in the form of a story that how we found a problem and how we are trying to fix and how it is in still kind of pro in progress. Uh, I'm Sama. I work for Clebra. Uh, I have interest in core kernel and uh, I'm really enjoying the city here. So I've been visiting around here. So it has been fun. Uh, so there are some Windows APIs uh, which are kind of essential when it comes to uh, games sometimes. Uh, so this is get right watch. Uh, so this API returns that uh, which addresses uh, have been uh, written to. So games use these API to uh, find out that which uh, that these pages have been written to. So these things are used in different kind of stuff like uh, implementing copy on write mechanism. For example, if game need to find out that there, there is a pool of 100 pages memory and it wants to find out that which pages have been updated so that it can only copy those to your uh, hard drive. So these uh, this API will return us that these pages are have been become dirty and th that those pages will be copied only. Uh, so th it has some different semantics like uh, you need uh, it will only return it has an argument that you can ask it for only a specific number of pages. For example, there may be ten pages, but it will it can ask that I only need uh, to find three dirty pages so that it can only deal with that. So this we need to keep uh, take care of these arguments very carefully when we are going to want, uh, want to see how we can do this inside Linux. And this also, uh, the, this API is also widely used in security, intrusion, detection, and debugger detections. Uh, so. Uh, uh, it, on Linux, we have not seen much uh, intrusion detection in case of games because a lot of games are online competitive, so they need to build uh, a mechanism by which uh, they can find out if someone, some external program is affecting writing to your uh, game's memory. So this API is quite important, and also some garbage collectors use it. So there is another API. Uh, it is kind of sub part of uh, previous one. It, it, it just resets the state for specific pages. So what do we want really? So we want to translate these APIs uh, by Vine or some other translation mechanism. And then we want uh, Linux kernel to handle it. So there can be different mechanisms like user space can, uh, can handle this. We, can try to not even ask kernel to track these things. So the first thing which uh, comes into mind that uh, let's try to use mprotect and sig segv. Uh, so right now Vine is using the, using this mechanism. So what happens is that we write protect a memory, uh, and we also register a segmentation handler. So uh, when a memory doesn't have any kind of write permissions, so it when we when some some program will try to write to that memory, we will get a segmentation fault, and in that segmentation faults handler, we can do the bookkeeping that which pages have been written to and which pages are still not written to, and this bookkeeping can just uh, help us to uh, kind of translate Windows APIs on Linux in just user space. So it is not a very uh, fast or good mechanism uh, because uh, signals are kind of POSIX standard, but they are not very fast enough. Uh, so as you can see, there would be some communication going on between kernel and user space. And also, even if we use this, uh, there are some some things which don't work. 
For example, there are some drivers uh, which don't like write protected memory. So there may be some mechanism. Developers can do anything, right? So you are restricting the way how the memory works. So that can get fail at some point in some application. There can be another mechanism. So there is a kind of recent uh, uh, system call in Linux. It is called user fault FD. So you can initialize a file descriptor and then you, you need to register your memory with user fault FD. So this is kind of same like mprotect, but this use different mechanism. Uh, so we are not try right protecting the memory. It is just another feature. So it, it will write protect memory inside the kernel. And, and whenever we will, any program will try to write to that memory, we will get a message by polling this, this file descriptor that this, mem that this memory is being written to and what do you want to do? And we, we will do the simple thing just like uh, in the previous mechanism. We will just resolve the fault and we will just do the bookkeeping that this page has been written to. So uh, this uh, is even slower than mprotect because whenever someone would write to that memory, uh, we will, kernel will send a message to user space through this file descriptor that this is being written. So then uh, user space need to handle it. So there is this communication between kernel and user, user space. So that is, that is not very efficient. So there have been some cases reported uh, that this creates problems for loading of games, like it needs uh, to load in uh, 10 or 20 seconds, but it takes more than one or two minutes in some cases. So before talking about memory management further, so let's talk about some basic concepts very quickly. Uh, so memory, when we talk about memory management, so kernel deals with memory in page size chunks. So page size can be different on different platforms. On x86, we use four kilobyte uh, of page size. Uh, so there, there are tables which are used to map virtual to physical addresses. So, and these pages have, pages have entries and these entries have uh, the page frame number, which is a physical address in the memory. Protection bits, like read, does it have read permissions or write permissions or stuff like that. For example, we have talked about write protecting a memory by mprotect syscall. So that will change this protection bits. Then there are some status flags in uh, page table entry. So this, this is what we are gonna talk about further. Then there is a virtual memory area or commonly called VMA. It is used to track uh, the process, processes memory areas. Uh, for example, uh, process has BSS or data segment or different segments which, are, which have kind of same attributes. So it, it is kind of an internal structure in kernel to keep track of uh, same kind of memory. And page fault is a exception mechanism. So whenever kernel finds out that page is not present in the memory, so it generates a page fault that is in internally handled that kernel loads that. But sometimes if, uh, if a page doesn't have write permissions, so it will generate a page fault as well. And there is last one is TLB. So TLB is kind of a cache. So it, uh, it keeps track that of the last entries which have been translated. So, so that a translation phase can become faster. So a process asks TLB first. If it has the mapping, then it uses that. If it is not present, then it loads from page tables. So it will glue in the next slides. So kernel already has a soft dirty PTE flag. 
So it is a software only status flag. So it is not like uh, there is all there is also a dirty flag inside hardware. So we are not talking about that. So this is soft dirty flag is only a software flag, which is kind of similar to what what we are looking for. So the writable. Uh, so how does soft dirty work? So so there is a writable bit of page table entry. So it is just cleared. And then when someone tries to write to that memory, so inside the kernel, page fault is generated. And that page fault is handled inside kernel. And it finds out that this, is ha this has happened because of soft dirty flag not present. So it handles the flag, handles that fault very quickly earlier in the handler. So it, it, is, not, uh, it is a very good way not a very slow one like we have talked about other mechanisms. So uh, we only have uh, two operations available right now. So we can find out the flag for all the present pages of a process by reading page map file. And we can also clear the soft dirty flag of entire process. So there is no way to a clear flag for a particular memory only. So that definitely is a shortcoming. Uh, but when this feature was get, uh, being written, the software dirty one, so they found out that some memories can get deallocated and reallocated again. So soft dirty, soft dirty will not be able to track that. So they added another flag inside VMA. It called VM soft dirty to track that which VMAs are dirty. And then uh, soft dirty is not the only PTE flag. So it is now all between PTE flag and VMA flag. So if any one of these is set, we will consider it a page soft dirty. So we will talk about how this VM soft dirty is going to create problem for us. Uh, so when this got added, uh, there is another thing is that so Kernel wants to keep less and less VMAs. So whenever there are some similar VMAs of having same flags, so kernel will try to merge those. So when soft dirty got added to VMAs, so it created a problem is that some VMAs may not have uh, soft dirty, so they will not get merged. And that will create a problem like uh, number of VMAs would increase a lot, and we don't want that. Uh, there is a maximum number specified uh, inside kernel. You can set it by sysctl, uh, but uh, we don't want to do that. It would be a regression. So, so they looked at the problem and they solved it like they should not merge. They should just ignore soft dirty flag while deciding if VMAs should be merged. So this was back in 2014 or something. So this created a problem like, uh, for example, if one VMA is dirty, but one is not dirty. So if the board get merged, so all of two merged VMA would become dirty. So if you are expecting only five pages to get dirty, but there would be 10 pages. So it has become not a very accurate mechanism. So overall, the shortcomings is that it is not accurate. Soft dirty flag on a part of memory cannot be cleared. And atomic get and clear operation is not possible, which is what we want, uh, because we need it to uh, translate get right watch. So CRIU pro project is checkpoint restore in user space project. Uh, so it, it, use, it is using soft data from uh, quite a while, and probably they have introduced it inside memory management. Uh, so they also use this soft dirty flag, but also they are also not very happy with it uh, because they sometimes need to freeze the process to take a snapshot to find out which pages are dirty and copy them. So, so this project is used to take a snapshot of a process and then you can run it again later or maybe transfer it to some other machine. This is also used to, for container migration. So sometimes there are also post-migration crashes. So we found out that so, uh, the CRIU project is also, uh, also need this kind of some other mechanism, better mechanism to deal with these kind of problems. 
So we decided let's add uh, ioctl based on soft dirty flag. Uh, so we will add a clear operation on a particular range of memory, which is not already present. We will add a get and clear operation atomically. And when uh, we don't, because we want accuracy, so we will just ignore this VM soft dirty flag by just taking some uh, argument from user. If he want accuracy, he can just, we can just ignore it. And we were going good. Downstream, patches were already upstream. We were sending it probably fourth or fifth VN. And we found out on our latest release that it has been broken. So then we have we had started working on this. We were seeing that PTE, soft dirty PTE flag was being set regardless if VMA is dirty or not. Uh, but this uh, was not the case anymore with the latest release. So we tried to uh, argument with them, but uh, nobody Listen, because it doesn't, it had not broken the user space. So user space was acting the same. So that's the, the rule was being followed. So we thought let's fix soft dirty functionality once for all. Uh, so, so there was a bug, kind of bug in soft dirty feature creation was that whenever a new VMA was being created. So we was check, we were checking if we want, if it can be merged with the previous VMA. And then afterwards, we were setting a soft dirty flag. So this was the original bug, which they didn't found at the time. And they allowed VMAs getting merged without considering soft dirty. So now that I found this issue, so I tried to get it merged. But they said this will definitely cause regressions, because this is a very old feature, and we never want to uh, break others. So, so I thought, why don't we just keep track of which part of VMA is dirty and which part of VMA is not dirty? Uh, so I spent some time, I wrote a, come up, come, came up with the patch, and we were tracking that which part of VMA is not dirty because it was easier to implement in terms of when we looked at the code. So that was working fine, uh, but this would have increased VMA's uh, structure size by eight bytes and then each entry subregion of the VMA would have in, uh, increased the size by 32 bytes. So that would have been a lot. So VMAs uh, are widely used inside kernel and kernel developers are always looking to how they can decrease the size, not increase. So this is also not a very famous or most used functionality. So they just uh, asked us that this, this is not possible. So we thought, let's just leave soft dirty flag now. And instead, let's do something with user fault FD. Uh, we, we can add a write protect asynchronous feature. And we can just update the ioctl. Uh, so, so we have already talked about user fault FD write protect earlier. Uh, so in that case, uh, fault need to be handled from user space. So there is a messaging going on between kernel and user space. So this would be a new write protect mode where kernel can resolve the fault by itself. So this would not be a original intention of a user fault FD designer, but this is what we are looking for right now. Uh, and there was no other way. So we just added it. So, uh, a page is considered dirty if it is not written, it is not write protected. So that was easy to do. But later on, we found out that if a memory, if a PTE is empty or it is called PTE none, so it will not remember that the, the state was cleared or not. So we had to add another feature to user fault FD. Uh, which is named at unpopulated. So it will just place PTE markers instead of putting flag because PTE is none, so we cannot put any flag inside PTE none. So it, it worked quite well. And then we updated a page map scan octal. So we started using uh, this write protect asynchronous and started giving input in uh, struct. I will show this struct later. And then we had to include 
do all of this scanning for all memory types because we want a uh, feature complete uh, feature complete uh, patches uh, so we included huge tlb as well so which was not included or needed because it was not it, it wine doesn't use it and we are not we were not sure if criu also needed it and we also needed to handle holes so, so now we have four data ty four types of memories like uh, normal pages, transparent huge pages, and huge TLB, and finally holes. And then uh, the supported operations are that we need to scan the address address space. So there is always a get operation. So we, instead of putting a flag for get operation, we have decided that whenever user provide a output buffer, it means he want to get some data from kernel so that, so that get operation would be performed. And then this w write protect matching flag would be used uh, to write protect the pages. So just like I've said, like write protects, when we write protect a memory, so it means that it is not dirty anymore. So dirty and uh, written to are kind of synonyms here. And then just to, uh, sometimes you may have a larger area of memory and some part of the memory is not initialized or registered with user fault FD. So you will get error in that case. So sometimes user may want to avoid that. So we have put another flag. Uh, scan check WP async. So if this is set, so we will just abort the operation if uh, we found out that this region was not registered. Then we got some more feedback from uh, CRIU developers. So they said that you are returning uh, one byte for one page, so that's a lot of data. So why don't we just compact all the return data from uh, kernel? So, so then we decided to return ranges, address ranges with their flags, instead of returning the addresses with their flags. So that proved to be a really good thing. So later on, we found several improvements in performance because of this. They also asked us to add some more flag support inside IOctal. So this is a scan IOctal, which is generic. So, so they asked us to add five or four uh, more flags into it. Like soft, we, we are interested only in soft data from our side, but because they need support, so we just added it. And also they wanted some filtering support. Uh, for example, they will pass a specific flags that they want all the present pages, which are file based, right? So they can just pass it and they can just find those pages instead of wasting their time in user space. So that would be more efficient. So we started returning compacted data. So we uh, return data in form of ranges and flags are also returned. And this also in, uh, makes us return less data from kernel to user uh, because specific uh, copying mechanism is used to copy data from kernel to user. And there are also some limitations that because we are working in memory management, so memory, memory management controls all the memory. So we cannot write to user memory by when, when we have acquired memory management lock. So in that case, uh, we have to make a copy of that data inside kernel. So the, we, ha we are supporting uh, these flags right now. Uh, so WP allowed tells us that uh, async write protection is enabled on this region or not. So these flags are returned per page. And we, when we return data from kernel to user, so we consider that every page is a normal page. For example, if we talk about transparent huge page, which is normally two meg meg megabyte size, so it is considered to have, considered to have 512 normal pages. So if 
So in that case, we return 512's uh, address range data. And this page is written flag is our soft data alternative, or you can say return to flag. Then we can also find out page is file backed or not, present, swapped, and so on. Uh, these flags can be found by page map file, uh, right? But this IOCTEL is adding a better way in terms of like we are adding more operations which are not present already, and we are already adding a filtering mechanism which which can help in such a way like if there is some application which has very sparse VMAs, for example, there are a lot of examples like uh, KASCN. So that is a tool used to monitor memory leaks. So, so it has uh, uh, it creates shadow memories for all the allocated allocated memories. So uh, number of VMAs increase a lot. So in that case, they were scanning the entire uh, entire address space from user space by reading page map file because there was no other mechanism. But now they can just call this IOCTEL and they will find the exact addresses of those pages. So we added some masks. Uh, inverted mask uh, is that if we don't want uh, a particular fl flag, then we can just set it to one. And category mask is those pages, those flags which we are looking for. And there are some other mask like if we are looking for a page which is present or swapped, so we can use this uh, any of mask, and there is then return mask as well. Uh, so we are uh, also taking care of uh, backward compatibility in future. So we are take, uh, keeping track of size of struct uh, inside our argument. Because in future, maybe someone wants to add another flag inside this IOCTEL's input. And uh, this is just for future future's purpose. And uh, we also added this max pages, which, is, which can be optionally specified to find only X pages of interest. Uh, just like I mentioned that we needed to uh, translate get right watch. And uh, we also added another, another argument which is returned from kernel is that uh, how much address address spaces have been uh, walked for example if there are 100 pages of memory and we want to find only 10 pages uh, so uh, we will walk let's say up when we reached at 50 pages scanning we found out the 10 pages so we will return from kernel to user and so this 50th page or 51st page walk uh, address would be specified into walk end. So this is the argument. So uh, IOCTEL can only take one argument. So we are taking uh, the structures are used there. So these are all the arguments. Like size I have told that is, it is for uh, future proofing the feature. Flags are the operations we want to perform. Start and end the addresses which we want to scan walk and is returned from the kernel and vec, vec length are the array and array, array size of the ranges we want to get from kernel. Max pages is specified which is optional to find out only some pages from the all the all the memory and they are uh, the mass mass. So definitely we are expecting uh, a lot of uh, performance boost here when we, we are going to compare it with the user space because there is not much communication going on between kernel and user space. Uh, so in, initial versions had some bad performance because we, are, we were re reusing a lot of uh, internal infrastructure of user fault FD. Uh, so in that case, we were getting very bad performance because TLBs were getting flushed every time we were write protecting a page. So later on, we had to write our own code to do that our own because we wanted a very simple way to do that. And also we just wanted to 
set one uh, user fault at the right protect flag. So that was that gave us a lot of performance boost. And also, uh, we had to do a lot of uh, passes, multiple iterations to tune the best performance. Uh, for example, there were a lot of things like we need to keep track of da uh, output data in ranges form. So uh, we need, so we have to iterate over ra of address range user want us to do. So we, we, and also because we cannot pass our user buffer inside, we cannot write up to our user buffer inside uh, memory management locks. So, so we had to see how that would be work best. Uh, so, uh, so we we are using 12 KB of internal uh, temporary buffer inside kernel uh, to keep track of all the data from inside the scanning, and then we just copy that to user, and then scanning goes on. So. These numbers are just way too good because we are comparing with user space. So not a very good mechanism because we are enabling things here instead of uh, making something better. So we are looking at three things here. First one is that when, uh, when this write protection and data is being written to pages, so what is the speed of uh, data getting ret returned to that page? That is our uh, blue, blue graph, blue in graph. And then we are measuring time to emulate, get right watch and reset right watch. So these are not very exact benchmarks because original implementation of get right watch and uh, reset right watch would come from wine developers. So there would be a lot of other things which they will have to handle. So these are just simple use cases. We are comparing it with uh, M protect and SIG segue. But overall, it seems like really good improvement because we are just adding more features. So right now we are at version 33. Uh, some patches have been already been reviewed. Almost four or five developers are involved. Uh, but we are we, at version 33 still, we have not gotten any reply from maintainer uh, in the last three or four weeks, maybe because of merge window as well. So let's see when we get some news. Uh, it can be merged at any time or it cannot be merged at all. So we are not sure until we get any reply. So uh, there are some games as an example, which really use this right watches to get, so they can get benefit of it once it gets merged into kernel and then wine develop, wine is also starts uh, sport, sporting this. Uh, so they will switch from uh, uh, M protect mechanism to this page map scan octal, which would be very clean mechanism. So let's talk about uh, problems which were faced reaching to this point. So uh, core kernel, especially uh, memory management, uh, whenever you are trying to do something there, so it is uh, somewhat complex. And you also need to do a lot of testing uh, to make sure uh, that everything is working fine, every memory type here and there, and even after every doing testing everything, there, there may still be some race condition which you are not handling. So testing is the most important thing. Uh, even though I was writing self-test along my development, but still there were a lot of different things which we found out later that I had to write some randomized test, uh, intelligent kind of test of, of, uh, to find out if there was something missing or some corner case was missing. And original developers of the soft dirty, which we were expecting would get involved and we will, we will reach to some point sooner. So they were not available or maybe they have moved somewhere else. Uh, so this soft dirty feature originally was added uh, around 2013. So they were definitely would be at different places these days. So it was really difficult to find people to review things or give us suggestions. And 
there was some lack of timely reviews and feedback on mailing list. Maybe these patches are not very interesting for uh, other kernel developers to review and comment. So maybe that this has also uh, slowed down uh, the development overall. So uh, you can definitely contribute by just finding these patches on mailing list and you can test it or you can review them. So it would uh, help a lot. So we have also added documentation in the patch series uh, so that it is easier to understand for other developers. Uh, almost 100 tests, KSELF tests have been added. Uh, there has been also thorough testing being done, was done by some mind developer. Uh, and the man pages updates are still pending. Uh, so I'm waiting for the patches to at least get accepted to MM unstable and then I'll be, I'll just write the man pages. Uh, so it takes quite some effort if someone asks you to update the patches, so you need to update the documentation as well and tests as well and then you, you I'll have, I, ha I would have to update man pages as well, so I have just skipped man pages for now. So this is all, uh, any questions? Okay, yeah. Uh, so, so to run Windows application on Linux, Vine is used as a translation layer. So I described that right now the translation of these Windows APIs, get right watch and reset right watch, uh, is not very efficient and also it has problems in some particular cases. So we are trying to emulate, translate that into in a better way inside Linux ecosystem. So once this goes into the kernel, so Vine can translate those API calls in a better way. So that would help uh, Vine applications, Windows applications. Uh, and also it can, it, it has potential to help other things like CRIU is just one example. Yeah. Yeah, Vine, Vine was the initial thing, but then we found CRIU, they, they are, those developers are very interested in this feature. And this is just like, uh, once something goes in, then other users would come along. So these are just two examples. Yeah. How did you have enough patience to write 33 versions? I didn't have. <laughs> so uh, it is all about uh, culture at Culebra, like they, uh, they are senior developers and very good management and uh, the client you are working with. So they are very cooperative. They know how upstream works. And also there are some uh, subsystems or some particular components in those subsystems, which are people are not much interested, uh, but still you need to push it because you are just interested into that. Uh, so sometimes when there is silence on mailing list, we just go to some other, go to some other thing. Uh, but it just, it's, it just keeps going on. And, and, and uh, there are a lot of suggestions upstream. So if, when there were only two developers involved, so there have been different developers involved at different phases. For example, initially when we were sending one to five, there were some other developers which were involved. So they were giving us suggestions. Later on, some other developers who uh, came which were not interested earlier and then they were gone and newer, newer developer came. And whenever someone gets involved, they give a lot of suggestion uh, and you need to deal with them, their suggestions, see how things work. And sometimes you just have to do whatever they are saying because, because no, uh, they are not much reviewers. So when there are a lot of reviewers, you have the choice to discuss a lot. And if one agrees, one doesn't agree, you, you have the choice. But if only one developer is reviewing, then you will have to do whatever the reviewer is saying. 
So it is all about patience. Well, you can catch me later. So thank you so much.